Everlasting Glow Coat presents Marion and Jim Jordan as Booger McGee and Molly, with Donald Novice, the Four Notes, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Don't Ever Leave Me. Well, the papers are full of track meets, Olympic candidates, and other sporting news. But Fibber is staying home with a little oral athletic event of his own, a jumping toothache. And here in the living room at 79 Whistle Vista, we find a derelict of dental devastation, soothed by a sympathetic spouse, Fibber McGee and Molly. Is my face any more swole, Molly? <laughs> it certainly is on one side. You look like a composite photograph of Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Believe me, if I'm hardy enough to last through the day with this toothache, I can rest on my laurels. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! Dead red it there goes again. Now, look, McGee, you've either got to make up your mind to go to the dentist or do something else. Uh, okay. Okay what? Let's do something else. <laughs> Come in. Did somebody knock? No, but they're going to. This tooth has got me so sensitive, I anticipate things. <laughs> you see? Come in. Mr. Benny? No, this is Tuesday. Oh, darn it, I must have overslept. <laughs> How does my face look now, Molly? Well, to be sympathetic, not so bad. But to be frank, it's terrible. Oh. Listen, McGee, remember how people used to put a string around a loose tooth and tie it to the doorknob? <laughs> oh, yeah, but the hey, you ain't going to do that to me, are you? Well, it seems to be a choice between the doorknob and the dentist. Okay, I'll take the doorknob. The dentist is definite, but the string might slip. <laughs> Go ahead, there's some string in that drawer. Heavenly days, look at this drawer. Looks like a tornado in a ten-cent store. Fish and tackle, pipe cleaners. Dominoes, bicycle clips. Hmm. Is that where them bicycle clips are? I've been looking for them since 1912. <laughs> oh. Now, be brave, dearie. It won't be long now. Oh. Here's the string. Now, open your mo- mouth wide. I want a room to tie a nice bow knot. A bow knot on my tooth? Yes. Yeah. I want it to look neat if anybody should come in. Oh. <laughs> there, now, you sit in that chair and make yourself comfortable while I tie the other end to the door knob. Don't, don't come in, don't come in. There's nobody oh, home. For goodness sakes, McGee, you can't put it off forever. You ought to be glad there was no suspense. Now brace yourself, dearie. <laughs> okay. Come in. Oh. 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 <laughs> Is my tooth out, Molly? No, dearie. It pulled the knob off the door. <laughs> What was it you wanted, sir? Oh, would you be interested? Would you be interested? I'm taking some... I'm, I'm working my way through the universe. Do universe. you need any magazine? Magus- do you take time? <laughs> time for what? Well, I'm referring to the public... To the public... To the... You see, we're having a sales competition. A sales competition. Well, how about Collier? <laughs> no, thanks, but I got a bad eye, too, and I can't read. Well... Well, just this week, we're, we're featuring a combination. A combination. This offer is so spectacular. Spectacular. It's so spectacular. Say, excuse me, brother, but there's a piece of string hanging out of his Hanging a stick. There's a piece of string hanging a Hey, lady, you got him hooked. Why don't you pull him in? <laughs> I think he's got a string on his own piece. <laughs> With slip knots. As long as the doorknob idea didn't work, McGee, you got to go to the dentist. Oh. Let's go down and see Dr. Gildersleeve. Oh, not that Gildersleeve. Why, he's a very good dentist. We used to go to school with him, remember? Yeah. <laughs> I think you don't like him because you used to have a crush on me. <laughs> I've outgrew that, but I never did like that. I wouldn't let him fill a tooth in my pocket comb. <laughs> I ain't going. You're not? No. What? <laughs> Shall we walk or take the car? <laughs> we'll walk. The fresh air will do you good, dear. Come on now. Oh, okay. Sweep them leaves off this porch. Put me there, Molly? Yes, dearie. 
Do you feel any better now? Oh, no. Every step I take, I get a sharp shooting pain in that tooth. Oh, heavenly day. Here, open your mouth, McGee. Oh. There, now, is that better? Oh, boy, I'll say it is. What'd you do? I took the string off. You've been dragging that doorknob for two blocks. <laughs> Folks, that was Donald Nova singing The One Rose. Beautiful song, too, Don. Didn't you think so, Molly? I certainly did, Mr. Nova. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. But say, folks, did you ever hear how that song came to be written? The One Rose? No, I don't believe so, Don. How? Well, down in Tin Pan Alley, one composer got jealous of another composer and put a firecracker under his piano stool. Uh -huh. Well, uh, what happened? The One Rose. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> The one row. <laughs> well, after a boomer like that. <laughs> oh, that got it, that goes. Well, Mr. McGee, what seems to be the matter? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Apple? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? And Miss McGee. Oh, hi, Abby. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Apple. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mrs. Apple. Hello, Mrs. McGee. 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 Hello, Mrs. So I looked at it, and I said to it, I said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, do you think this dad ratted swelling will be gone before fall? <laughs> oh, my, how did you do it? Oh, but really, Miss McGee, you should do something about that face of yours immediately. That's a coincidence, Duffy. The, the first time I met you, I said, the very same thing. He's got a bad toothache, Mrs. Duffy. We're on our way to the dentist. Oh, oh, I see. But coincidentally, I am rather superstitious about mirrors myself. <laughs> they do tell the truth about yourself. And now, for instance, listen to me. Look at this one in my handbag. Huh? Does this one say anything to me? It's kind of cracked, Duffy. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You know, sometimes I wonder if Uppy ain't a little smarter than she looks. And then again, I realize she'd almost have to be. <laughs> yeah, little Johnny Stein, yeah. Oh, there, Johnny, ho, daughter. No way I can find a good dentist. <laughs> There's several right down in the middle of the block, old time, and I'm on my way to one myself. Much obliged. John Stein here got a bad wisdom tooth. Oh, you mean that new? You're taking him to the dentist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says you can't take a mule to a dentist's office. The proper place for mules is behind the plow. <laughs> or under the bed. Oh, <laughs> 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 That's too good, Johnny. And that's just about the way I heard it. <laughs> Only the way I heard it, a fellow named McGee says to me, to me, says... You can't take a mule to a dentist. Why not, says I, taking a burr out of his tail. He wouldn't have neglected his teeth if he hadn't have been a jackass. <laughs> well, that's an awfully funny-looking mule, Mr. Oldtimer. <laughs> his left shoulder's a little high. Yep, he, he's a California mule. Very unusual wiggle. Oh. <laughs> Taking a mule to a dentist. Oh, so I'm acting silly, am I? Oh, I didn't mean you. I'm safe. Hey, you mean me? <laughs> Come on, McGee. Here's Dr. Gildersleeve's office. I hope he gets this over with quick. So do I. What's that magazine there, McGee? This one? Yeah. Leslie's Weekly of April 10th, 1911. Oh. <laughs> Give me that one over there. Hello there, folks. Hey, have I got great news for you. What is it, Mr. Wilcox? Has peace broken out in Europe? <laughs> No, no, but listen, I was telling the dentist next door all about Carnu. You know that new Johnson Auto Polish that takes almost no effort to use? Oh, yes, we know, Harlow. We got the same sponsor, remember? <laughs> <laughs> what about it, Mr. Wilcox? Well, I was telling this dentist how Carnu would give his dingy old automobile a gorgeous, glittering, sales room appearance. How all he has to do is apply it to the clean surface and let it dry and wipe it off, and presto, oh. his car looks so high hat, he's afraid to drive under a viaduct. Oh, my. 
Well, of course, being a dentist, he appreciated the value of a product like Carnu that would clean and polish in one operation. Ain't he wonderful, folks? He had to train to do that without gesture so he wouldn't knock himself out. <laughs> Mr. Wilcox, what's so unusual in telling a dentist about Johnson's car news? Why don't you get it? The old story. Man bites dog. Patient gives dentist wax impression. Is that the oh. or is that the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Patient gives dentist wax impression. What old Harlow needs is a pivot tooth. All his conversation revolves around Johnson's wax. <laughs> Oh, that's that affair goes again. Well, I don't imagine we'll have to wait long. No, there's nobody ahead of us. I bet you there is, I bet you. Oh, hi there, little girl. Oh, are you waiting to see the dentist, little girl? Hmm? Are you waiting to see the dentist? No, I've seen one. Oh. He wears a white apron like a dentist. Oh. Please, sis, that, that ain't a very pleasant picture you're drawing for me. I'm not drawing a picture, I bet you. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> oh, we are, huh? Hmm? <laughs> 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 He's kind of young for dental trouble, ain't you, Mom? Yeah. What seems to be your trouble, sis? I hope you ain't been eating too much candy. Why? Well, it ain't good for you. It's all that rich stuff, rich stuff that ruins your teeth when you're young. Remember that. Yeah, I do. I bet that. Hmm? <laughs> I think you better take good care of your teeth while you're little or you're liable to lose them premature. Hmm. Don't you believe me? Definitely no. Dental decay is not necessary and not betrayed due to the consumption of food carrying chloride value. Oh, undoubtedly there is a definite connection between dietary deficiencies and oral hygiene. It is my personal belief that hereditary factors are far more important. Or in other words, if you're a guy with bum teeth, so is your old man. Four notes singing, hooray for spinach. Garnished with a few hard-boiled eggs laid by, or led by Billy Mills. <laughs> Very commendable, kid. Hey, Molly, if Dr. Gildersleeve don't call us pretty soon, I'm going to... Oh, there, Molly. Oh. Hello, McGee. Hi. Nice to see you. Step right in. Well, thank you, Doctor. McGee has a tooth that's bothering me. Yeah. Yes, bad-looking face there. Oh. <laughs> Sit right in the chair here, McGee. Okay. Now, lift your chin while I put this bib on you. Oh, I don't believe I could eat anything right now, Doc. Quiet, oh. <laughs> McGee. The doctor knows what he's doing. Take a good look at that tooth, Doctor. I think maybe it's ulcerated. Certainly, Molly. Certainly. <laughs> Which one is it, McGee? No! That's it, all right. Oh. Looks very bad, too. I I'm afraid I'll have to give you gas. Oh, gas. Man bites dog again. Somebody gives McGee gas. <laughs> have I got to take gas, Doc? Ain't you got any other anesthetics? Oh, several, McGee. Cocaine, novocaine, monocaine, coppercane, lipocaine, and ambercane. Well, take your choice, McGee. The K in your ring is the K in your get. <laughs> Listen, you two, lay off the vaudeville. Go ahead, Doc. Give me Novocaine. Give me sugar cane. Give me gas. But give me. And get that tooth out of there. And don't hurt any more than you have to. Just remember, Doc, remember our boyhood friendship and take it gentle. Ah, uh, yes. The good old days. Public school 14. Yeah. I, uh, I had quite a crush on you in those days, Molly. Oh, now, Wilbur. I mean, Dr. Gildas, please. You didn't, really. Oh, yes, I did. Don't you remember that big valentine I sent you? No. It was two feet across, covered with lace and filled with bonbons. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was so bashful, I was even afraid to sign my name to it. Well, was that from you, Wilbur? McGee said he sent that. Oh. <laughs> Yes, yes, he would. <laughs> well, I guess all's fair in love and war, Molly. Between you and me, it was love. Between Fibber and me, it was war. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. And say, would you ever forget the time Listen, we went folks, on? folks, I hate to take the dew off your beautiful forget-me-nots, but could you spare a thought for a poor suffering fugitive from a forceps? Excuse me, McGee. I'll get right at it. Okay. Now, just lean back and take it easy. I'll lean back. You take it easy. Now, put this mask over your face and breathe deeply. Oh, is that for the gas, Doctor? Yes, I'll give him nitrous oxide. Although for actors, I usually give mustard gas. It goes well with the ham. Quiet, McGee. Now, breathe deeply. I'll turn on the gas. Oh, 
Will it hurt him, Doctor? Oh, you'll never know what's happening. You know, Molly, I often oh, think of those old days in the red schoolhouse. Yeah. Do you remember Miss Padditch, our old school teacher? Oh, yes. Oh, you mean the one that... Oh, oh yes. listen, Doctor, listen. Oh, gotta hurry. Don't want to be late for school. Yeah, yeah. He's dreaming. Oh. You heard us mention the old school days. People under gas are very impressionable. Oh, I want to get there before old Fadish. <laughs> Got a great trick I'm going to play on Wilberforce Gildersleeve. <laughs> Never know who done it either. <laughs> oh. Can I carry your book? There's your pants, Stinky McGee. But don't let the teacher see you. She'd paint if she saw you with the book in your hand. Oh, boy. Wilbur? Wilbur. Wilbur Gildersleeve, you come right back here. Oh, me, Miss Fadette? What for? You know very well what for, young man. You march right in here. Oh, Oh, boy. Uh, Bacon, it looks like Wilbur's playing in hard luck now. Did you see the picture of Mr. Dixie was after drawn on the blackboard? Sure, Molly, but he's being a darn fool, Harry, for saying he's on end to it, I think. <laughs> Don't you stinky for it. Hey, listen, kid. <laughs> listen, kid, I drew that picture myself and signed his name to it. Oh, yeah! Don't show it, <laughs> Gee, I wish teacher hadn't kept him after school. He promised me I could polish all the desks. Ah, <laughs> Faith, and you're always wanting to be polishing something, Harlow. Well, I like to polish things, gee. Hey, Stinky, what you got on? A badge. And what's the letter on it say now? <laughs> you can read it. Twenty-three to do it. <laughs> I love my wife with all you kids. Ah, <laughs> uh, Faith, it is a lot of nonsense. I'm having a badge of two kids, and it is saying I need a very good job. Chicken inspector. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to wear my badge, Molly? Ah, uh, you're Stinky. Then would you be coming over to my house tonight for a bit of run, cheap run? <laughs> no, I can't. Dad read it. <laughs> Got to chop some wood and bring in some coal and haul out the ashes and all stuff like that there. <laughs> oh, I have not. Ah, oh, Faith and Stinky McGee, you just told me this morning that you like me. <laughs> oh, shucks. Hey, who's wanting to play games at Mumsy Pub? Oh, you mean Mumbly Peg. That's what I'm saying. Mumbly's more decided. I, it is a oh, 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 Now, let that be a lesson to you, Master Gildersleeve. Oh, oh, the idea of drawing that terrible picture of me. You should be ashamed. I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't. Somebody else did it and signed my name to it. Ah, tell it to swing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do your drum standing up now for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, one of you fellas do that picture, and I'll find out who did it. I'll get even oh, one of these days. You'll see about it. Oh, look, Doctor, he's coming out of it. He must have been dreaming about something amusing. Look at him smiling. Wilbur is a cry, baby. Wilbur is a cry. <laughs> hey, McGee, snap out of it, dearie. The doctor's all through now. All right, McGee. Sit up. Now, what? The, what? Oh. Oh, hi, Molly. Oh, what? Where am I? Well, don't you remember, dearie? In Dr. Gildersleeve's office. This is Wilbur Gildersleeve that we went to school with. Oh. Oh, yeah. How do you feel now, dearie? All right, all right. By the way, McGee, do you remember that picture you drew on the blackboard? That uh, gag you pulled on me? Oh, yeah. Well, I just got even. Huh? I just pulled all your teeth. Oh. Why, you never know such a thing. Why, he did. Oh, God. <laughs> in just a moment. Well, I 
I don't know, McGee. He did some beautiful work for Aunt Sarah. Oh, he did, huh? What was her trouble? <laughs> her sweet tooth. Oh, her sweet tooth? Yes, she saw some French pastry one night, and her mouth watered so fast it washed out two bridges. <laughs> the folks, speaking of playing tricks with the ivories, we're delighted to announce that next week we'll have as our guest that brilliant musical humorist, the star of our summer show, Mr. Alex Templeton. And don't miss him. Good night. Good night, all. This is Marlowe Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's...